Hi people, uh, it's New Year's Day today, the most quietest day of the year. Uh, wanna wish you a happy and fishy new year at first. Hopefully you'll catch all the fish you were dreaming of in 2014. Um, I'm down here in the workshop to uh, continue working on some stainless steel spoon blanks that I've made during past days. Hammered from a 1.2 to 1.4 stainless steel sheet. Made different shapes and sizes. And uh, some have holes to attach beads. And what I want to do now is to uh, first polish them and later I would uh, anneal some to have a dark blue finish and also plate them with uh, glitter flakes. Uh, I'm, I have tested some of these blanks in the top to see whether they would perform and they do apart from these ones, these ones tend to turn over and flutter, but uh, I've made my tests with bare treble hooks and also with a tight treble, and I found that tight trebles slow down the action a bit, so uh, not necessary, necessarily for bad, so I'm uh, going to attach tight trebles to all of these. Uh, I'm going to put all on video, it's going to be a, a, a video, a serial, maybe three or four takes and within a couple of days or weeks, depends how I've got time to proceed, but I'm going to put the entire procedure on video for you to figure out how I do this. Uh, now first polishing is in order and uh, I'd see how far I would get today all right okay folks now I will start to display the polishing for stainless steel you would start uh, with such a steel bristle wheel uh, to get an even and smooth surface to clean out all uh, remaining uh, sharp edges would round it off a bit. If you have spoons of uh, copper and uh, brass you must not use a steel bristle wheel because this one will scratch very deep scratches into the softer material. In this case you will start out with a brass bristle wheel. Though this one is having quite firm bristles, you should go for the softer type. But for stainless steel spoons, we do not need this brass wheel. Alright. So, let's start out with uh, the steel brass wheel. Okay. Safety precautions are... No loose sleeves so wrap them up very high or wear sleeveless and also very important wear eye protection because at every process this thing loses bristles and you do not want to have them stuck in your eyeballs very important wear eye protection okay have I fixed this thing I will start with only one spoon and be changing the wheels in between to have only one spoon of the lot completed for the camera and later I will do the rest without the camera. So this was going to be one of these large ones. Some more light. Uh, I don't know if you could see it in the camera how it's looking now and how it would look after the process. I'm already feeling the impact of the bristles on my head, so never go without eye protection.
Now the reverse side. Okay, I'm done. Now I will change this wheel to the first polishing wheel, which is this one with some kind of cord on it. Do not know what they call this in English. That's the cost polishing wheel. So fix it. You would also use polishing paste on this one. This brown one is for coarse polishing. So this spoon blank is already getting quite warm now. But it's still manageable. If it gets too hot for you, you might put it on a on a big anvil or steel plate, which would take the heat from it quite fast. But it's still manageable. For every new spoon. You want to give a little touch with the polishing paste again. And yeah, it's getting increasingly hot now. But I guess you can already see some improvement of the shine of the spoon. Um, I'll take a break now because it gets too hot. Okay, I took off the coarse polishing wheel now. Now I'm using the fine polishing wheel consisting of some kind of linen. You can buy such polishing sets in a tool marts or hardware stores but you need something with quite a lot of RPMs 2000 plus I would say rounds per minute otherwise it's rather useless okay now I'm taking the fine polishing paste and continue polishing my spoon At this operation, it gets real hot now. If you're polishing copper spoons, it might happen that you get electrically charged, so if you touch the workbench, you get a little electric shock. But I found out if I wrap some copper wire against my ankle and let it touch the floor, such won't happen. Well, it's not dangerous anyway. Unless you have inflammable stuff nearby. Or gasoline vapors or so, but nobody would have that in his workshop. <laughs> Let me take some more paste.
Okay, the polishing of this spoon is done. You see it shine now. Uh, if you want to apply some uh, uh, foil onto it, you must wipe them with alcohol. I would clean them anyway with mineral spirits because you see my hands got quite dirty because of the polishing paste. So you have to clean up all so thoroughly with uh, mineral spirit if you continue working. Um, the spoons that I'm going to plate with glitter, I will not polish them from the outer side, only the inner side. Because the outer side will be covered with uh, glitter flakes, so I want it rough for the epoxy that binds the glitter flakes later to adhere very well. So on such spoons I would only polish the inner side. Yep, but I will get to the uh, glitter plating in the second or third part of this video. So uh, now I'll switch off the camera and polish all the lot of my spoons, which are 16 pieces entirely. Okay. Hi folks, after about one to one and a half hours, all polishing work is done. Um, this lot here been polished only from the reverse side because they're going to be plated with glitter. Um, I like to do entire badges, uh, entire bunches of uh, spoons or spinner blades to be polished because your hands rather look like the ones of a coal miner afterwards and takes a lot of cleaning. Can't do uh, can't proceed painting with uh, these dirty fingers, need to have them clean. These spoons here are fully polished. Uh, what's left now is to... Uh, first I would uh, buff the outer side with 40 to 60 grit for adhesion of the epoxy when I'm going to plate them. And, well, I'll do this now. And afterwards I would clean them up and see whether I would still proceed today. Okay. Okay, three lures, three spoons I'm going to anneal. That's what I will still show you today. And then leave it for today and proceed with another part of this uh, tutorial video, maybe tomorrow, if I find the time. This is why I'm cleaning up only three spoons of uh, the reminders of the polishing paste. Uh, I can't proceed with painting or sticking on at adhesive foil with the dirty fingers. I have to get them clean. So, uh, three spoons I will anneal now, one in front of the camera. And then I call it a day down the workshop. All right. Okay, set up to anneal the spoons. With the gas operated soldering torch. Got myself a piece of stainless steel here. A water bucket. So this one will take some time to uh, heat up because it's quite a large spoon. This annealing only works with certain kinds of stainless steel. Um, I do not know the uh, material codes of other countries, but here in Germany this steel is called V2A, V2A. 
and uh, I've tried this annealing with cheap uh, tablespoon lures but these lost their stainless properties after the treatment and expensive tablespoon lures would not work as well because they contain shame, uh, shares of uh, chrome and manganese which will not let them heat up or change their color. Um, this kind of steel here is the stuff that's used for vent hoods or cookers at your local McDonald's widely used in such stuff and machinery producing things for uh, food or something like that. You have to try, you know. Hope my soldering torch won't let me down. Yeah, I should have put the light off. So take some time to heat this thing up. Let me put off the light. Yeah, it starts to glow a bit, but you want it real red hot. I'm using a piece of stainless steel wire to hold it. Never had any mess with it anyway. Yeah, it starts to brown already. We put the lights off. Don't know if we won't be able to see something now. Does, does not glow that hot. Dead red, I mean, not hot. Of course, it's hot. <laughs> Real hot. Um. I will later show you the color of these spoons. They are still shiny, but somewhat purple and blue. So, maybe better suited for very clear water. Yeah. I do not know whether the video captures it now in low light conditions. It has an orange color now. I guess it's okay. So I put it in the water. Okay. I'm done. Uh, I'll do the rest now without the camera. Alright. Okay, a close up, close up of the three annealed spoons. This one is a bit brown. This one's nice blue, brown at the rim, blue purple in the middle. This one is purple by the side and dark blue in the middle. And here's one plain polished. I move the light a bit, probably you could see something better. You see, brown, purple, more blue and plain polished, not annealed for comparison. So these three spoons might be better suited if you have the water clear. Comes a bit close to spoon blanks sold by American uh, tackle component stores called uh, Black Nickel. Actually this one is blued. Okay, just for your information. All right. Okay people, this was the first part of my uh, spoon video, how I polish spoons and how I'm annealing them and later applying uh, adhesive foil and uh, glitter flakes in the second and third part. I'm going upstairs now washing my coal miner hands and uh, having a sandwich for dinner and then watch some TV. Upload this video, of course. Uh, hopefully I could uh, proceed with the second part tomorrow, don't know yet. 
All right, anyway, but trust me, there will be more parts of these spoon videos. Until then, see ya, bye bye.